Today in the news, Nvidia's DLSS 3 is kind of insane, and Ryzen 7000 looks better and better. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Nvidia. Now, as you might know, my stance on the 4000 series is pretty clear. I personally think that it's way too expensive, but wow, are they still fascinating, even pre-launch. Nvidia's had their uh, editor's day yesterday. Basically, they showed some demos and added extra information about the RTX 4000 series to a couple of press people. And one of the super impressive things was of course DLSS 3. WCCF Tech was at the event and captured the uh, new tech in action. I'm gonna tell you right now, I was not expecting some of these uh, results. First, the clock speeds. The advertised boost clock speed for an NVIDIA GPU is usually in a worst-ish case scenario. For example, the RTX 3090's boost clock is advertised at 1700 megahertz. But in reality, thanks to NVIDIA's GPU boost technology, the same card runs at about 1900 megahertz. Well, we now know that the same thing will happen with the RTX 4090. The advertised boost clock for that GPU is 2.52 gigahertz, and according to the demo NVIDIA did yesterday, the actual clock speed can reach up to 2.85 gigahertz at stock. So when NVIDIA said that they were able to overclock this card to three gigahertz in their labs, I don't think that they were talking about LN2 overclocks. But that's not even the craziest info from that event. When DLSS 3 is enabled, the card actually saves power, and a lot of it. When they tested Cyberpunk 2077 at native 1440p, the 4090 was consuming around 461 watts, a big power chug. When DLSS 3 was enabled, at the quality settings, the power draw dropped significantly down to about 350 watts. That's a decrease of about 25% in power consumption. Still a lot, but definitely a power saving feature. And the temperatures? Well, thanks to the insanely huge coolers that 4090s are gonna have, the GPU never crossed 57 degrees Celsius. And that's at both with native res or DLSS 3.0. DLSS 3 was actually slightly cooler by about four degrees. Apparently, the presenter was also surprised by the results. The change in power could, and I'm speculating here, could be due to one of two things. First, the workload is partially moved to the tensor cores for DLSS 3, rather than just pushing every CUDA cores to their limits, so less power. Or, and the presenter kind of hinted at this, the GPU could possibly be bottlenecked by the CPU. That's definitely something that reviewers should test out. Anyways, it's impressive stuff. Plus, the FPS difference between native and DLSS 3 was huge. It went from 60 FPS all the way up to 170, a 2.8x performance difference. Now, of course, this is a highly optimized game demo for the new tech. Damn, I never thought that I'd say Cyberpunk 2077 and highly optimized in the same sentence, but it's true. Personally, I love the new tech. I know that some of you don't like the idea of generating frames out of thin air, but hey, we were already doing that with pixels, so I think that uh, you'll just have to accept it. So what are your thoughts on this? It's pretty impressive, right? I'm not saying go buy it since they've shown it in one game, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Speaking of clock speeds and impressive numbers, we got AMD in the news. Their Zen 4 based Ryzen 7950X is in a couple of overclockers hands and some results are already coming out. So we all know that this CPU has a boost clock of 5.7 gigahertz, but that's mostly a single to dual core thing. When the entire CPU is boosting, the average clocks across the cores is a lot lower. Same goes for Intel, by the way. And while we don't know exactly what the uh, average clock speed at full load looks like on a stock 7950X, we now know what an overclocker was able to achieve. In Cinebench R15, a group of overclockers were able to hit 5.5 gigahertz on all cores. That's really high, considering we're talking about all 16 cores being pushed at that speed. In Cinebench R23, so the newest version, the clocks go up to 5.4 gigahertz all core. The best part? 
This was all done with a good old 280 millimeter radiator AIO. Now, of course, this number is kind of misleading since all the system needed to do was pass that specific benchmark. The stability of a overclocked system like that is probably not great, but it means that this CPU has some great room for overclocking. Personally, I wonder how far undervolting this thing can be pushed here. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, it's right here to see the latest video, right here if you want me to deep learning super sample you. And I'm on the third generation here. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.